Hi, in this video, I'm going to show how to create a deep learning neural network from the scratch to detect digits in images using the Deep Network Designer app from the MATLAB Deep Learning Toolbox. In the reference of this video, you're going to see the corresponding documentation reference in addition to a reference to another video in which the same problem to detect digits in images is done with the Deep Learning Toolbox command line, command line API. In this video, I'm going to show how to do the same digit detection problem uh, using the graphic user interface of the Deep Network Designer application. Okay, so first uh, let's load uh, the same uh, digits uh, data set that is included in MATLAB. Let's go quickly over it. It has nine folders, ten folders, one for each digit, and the, the label of the images can be inferred from the folder so that's precisely what we're going to do when we create the data store. We in indicate that the images are in subfolders and that we're going to use them as the label source. OK, so let's create it. And these labels of the data store are going to be used by the deep learning toolbox to infer the, the category in the output of the neural network so that when you uh, it do use the predict or classify method from the neural network is going to return you a category uh, one of these categories that are determined by the labels of this folder okay so let's take a look at the image data store it has 10,000 files and uh, these are the corresponding labels for them which should be between 0 and 9 corresponding to the digits so now let's open the deep network designer and the deep, uh, network designer is gonna with it you're gonna do all you need to create a neural network uh, but also you can uh, uh, load an existing neural network and modify it retrain a pre-trained neural network but in this uh, example we're gonna show how to do it from the scratch if you want to do a pre-trained neural network you choose one of these there are more here and you can use also a sequence uh, neural network so all you can have a neural network uh, already trained in the as a variable in the base workspace and but in this example we're going to do it from the scratch so we're going to use new okay so there are two phases to create and train a neural network one of them is provide the data uh, the other one is provide the layers which is done is this tab and finally you train the network with this in in this tab you provide the options Okay, so first let's load the data. We can load the data. It is, uh, sorry, let's go back to show that well. So you can uh, load it uh, for an image data or a, or a regular data store. So let's import image data. So for import image data, we can use a folder. So we could provide the digits folder here, but instead we're gonna use an image data store that we already created and since it's only one, then it automatically picks it, picks it up. Okay, so uh, for training for training convolutional neural networks or neural networks for image detection, it is important to do data augmentation because uh, first uh, you may you make the network a uh, robust uh, for affine transformations like translation, rotation, uh, reflection. And also you can multiply the, your data. For example, if you have a digit and you have it a uh, vertical, but then you tilt it uh, like 30 degrees. Now you have two samples instead of one. And also you make the detection robust to that rotation. So here are all the affine transformations that you can provide. Uh, so let's pick a rotation. I mean, sorry, a reflection in the horizontal reflection. And also let's rotate by 30 degrees. We have to be careful with digits that if we flip them vertically, for example, uh, the six could become a nine and the label still is going to be six. So that's going to be our wrong data point. So let's just instead uh, flip it briefly. We can choose the amount of data is going to be used for validation. Uh, we're going to choose the default, which is 30 percent. We are going to randomize so that we can shuffle the, the, the data that comes so that it can come in a random order. And let's just import it. We're gonna see some samples of the of the data of the numbers. It detected the ten categories. 
And now we have the data, so let's go to the designer. Okay. Okay, so first we need the layer to uh, detect the, I mean, take the image as an input. And the images are 28 by 28, and they are grayscale. So they're going to be 28 by 28 by 1. They're just uh, black and white. Okay, the second layer is going to be the convolution layer to detect the fissures. This layer is essential for a uh, image detection, I mean, object detection in images. It detects uh, fissures like edges, lines, and other convolution, I'm sorry, uh, computer vision image processing uh, features. Okay, so we need some regularization so that the neural network can uh, generalize well. So we're going to put a batch normalization. And also we're going to put a rectified linear unit, which are common layers for convolutional neural networks. Also, usually these, all these layers are accompanied by max pooling. Uh, we have it here, but we're not going to use it. And uh, that, uh, that set is repeated over and over again. And with some branchings and with that, you got something like the Google net. Uh, okay, so finally we're gonna do the, uh, once we get the features, we're gonna do the the classification, and for that we need a fully connected layer, which is uh, like a matrix multiplication. All the layers are connected with each other. The convolution is just a, a small kernel window. In this case, three by three, but you can change it. And that little window, uh, which is used to detect patterns in the image, is passed through through the whole image. But in this case. Uh, this is more expensive, it's connecting everything. Okay, so for this one, we need 10, uh, the feature, the output features have to coincide with the categories that, uh, that we want to classify. So it is 10 in this case, so it's coincidence, so we leave it as it is. So finally, in order to uh, output the classification, we're gonna use a softmax and classification layer to emit the category. Okay, so let's make sure that this network is fine. Let's hit spacebar. And now let's make sure everything is okay without errors, without warnings. Yeah. So it's as expected, 28 by 28 by one input and the image decreases to one by one and we have 10 categories. A scalar output with 10 scalars, one for each category of digits. Okay. Okay, now we have the layers, we have the data. Finally, we need the training options to start training the network. So we're gonna use stochastic gradient descent with momentum uh, in with this initial rate. We're gonna use five epochs. An epoch uh, is, uh, for each epoch, we apply all the data that we have. Uh, although we can shuffle it uh, at every step. And that's what we're having here. Every step we switch, uh, change the order. But also we have data, random data augmentation with rotation and flipping. So uh, for each epoch, uh, the neural network is going to see different data, uh, a little bit different. So that's good to make it stronger and resistant to affine transformations. As, men as mentioned, the batch is the number of samples that are uh, for, for each batch. Uh, the, the weights of the neural network are going to be updated uh, with the stochastic gradient descent momentum algorithm. And basically what uh, that batch size becomes is a dimension in the tensor that is fed to the neural network. So all the samples are fed at once to update the weights. And for each epoch, uh, since we are going through all the data, we, the number of iterations for each epoch is going to be the number of samples, samples divided by the number of uh, the batch size. Okay, so that number of iteration is going to use to to know uh, how frequently we're going to check the validation. So we're going to uh, check the validation for each 50 iterations and to make sure that it's generalizing well. And yeah, there's all, all options we can specify. We have a 0.9 momentum for this algorithm. Okay, so that's good for now. Most uh, The only thing that we change is the epochs to five because it's a small problem. We don't want to go that far. So that's the only thing uh, that we change. The other things are default. So now we're ready to start training the, the data, the neural network. And ideally, uh, one thing that we want to check during training is that the validation 
accuracy is not that far from the training accuracy. Uh, the validation data, as you saw, is independent from the training data. So uh, that, that is the validation data is not used for uh, updating the weights of the neural network. So we can uh, check with that if it is generalizing well. If the accuracy of the training data is well above the validation data, then it means that we're not generalizing well. That is, uh, we are doing overfitting. So we have to improve the neural network to have better regular regularization techniques so that it can generalize well. But in this case, it looks that it's generalizing well because the validation data is close uh, from the validation accuracy is close from the training accuracy. You can see from the legend in here. And we have a 84.7% accuracy for validation, which is fine. Uh, we run for five epochs, 270 iterations. Okay, now we have our training neural network, so we can export it in a couple of ways. One of them is provide the training neural network as a variable in the base workspace. So we're gonna first do that, and we're also gonna generate code so that we can, uh, this is gonna generate M code that we can integrate uh, in another, let's say, uh, application um, that we made with this. Okay, so we exported the base workspace. So we have it here. Now let's try it uh, with a digit. Let's go to the digit folder. Let's pick up again the digit seven. I think we have, a, we already loaded the image. Let's make sure of it. Whoops, we don't have it. Okay, so let's load it. Okay, so this is a digit, number seven. So now uh, let's use the, this is the train neural network and use the cl classify method from the train, the, from the neural network and we pass the image and we should get the result, which is seven uh, as expected. Uh, so yeah, it correctly predicted, predicted, predicted the digit. So now uh, let's uh, generate the MATLAB code but we are in the wrong folder. We don't have write permission in this folder, so we have to change back to the example folder or whatever folder you have writing write access to. So let's export the M code. And when we do it, uh, we're gonna export two artifacts. One of them is the script, and the other one is the the an, a math file, which contains some, some properties that are used in the script. So the first thing in the script is loading th that data. And as you can see here, that data is going to contain the image uh, uh, training data store. Sometimes it can have properties for the layers, but not in this case. So, okay, so the data store, the data store for training is split in 70% for training and 30 for validation as we determine. We're going to use a data augmenter for doing the fine transformations like rotation and reflection as we determine it. And then we're going to use augmented data store to pass the augmenter and also doing resize. Uh, this should be a waste because we know that the images are 28 by 28 by 1. So this should not be resizing, but anyway, it did. And for validation, we don't have a, that augmenter, but he has it uh, for resizing the image for the input, although it doesn't really need to. You can provide that directly. Anyway, the validation is passed to, for the training options, and we have five epochs as we determine for training options and the layers are the same that we determined, same input size, three by three a window kernel for the convolution, a 10 a output categories for, for the fully connected layer. And then we pass the layers, we pass the data training data store and the training options. And that's gonna return us a train neural network, which is the same that we got uh, in this workspace. Okay, thank you very much for your attention.